Welcome back to YouTube, I'm again from In-Depth Tech Reviews and here is Google Apps Updates Roundup number 25 and in today's video I'm going to show you all the new changes that took place in the first week of June so without further ado, let's jump in I will start with Google Photos and the first change is this new privacy card that started to show up on all devices Google is trying to let you know that they will never use your photos or videos for any ads purposes and they are saved securely on their servers. So you can simply dismiss the card or learn more if you want to. And the second change is in the photo editor. Now when you try to edit any photo, you will see a dedicated tab for the markup tool and instead of being listed under the more tab. You will also see the buttons are labeled. You have pen, highlighter, and text. It works exactly the same as before, no difference here, but it got only a visual redesign. The third change is the new storage management tool that you can access by tapping on your profile picture and then tap on account storage, or you can also access it from photos settings, then backup and sync, and then tap on manage storage. Google released this new storage management tool because starting the 1st of June, the high quality unlimited photo backup is no longer available except for Pixel users. And that's why I'm getting this message on my Pixel 5. Backing up in high quality on this device is free and unlimited. But if you are using any other brand, the photos and videos in high quality will start counting against your cloud storage. Anyways, let's take a look at the manage storage page. The first thing you get is a time estimate for your storage before it becomes full. And this estimate is based on how often you backup content to your Google account. Then you will get the storage bar and a small legend. The dark blue color is for Google Photos and the light blue is for anything else like Drive, Gmail and more. After that, it will show you a quick shortcut to get more storage. And then we have the review and delete section. It has four categories to help you manage your storage. The first one is called large photos and videos and here it will show you all the photos and videos you have in descending order based on the size. From here you can multi-select the ones you want and start deleting from here or you can select all of them by tapping select and then tap on select all or you can simply tap the photo or video and use the move to trash button over here. The second category is blurry photos and here Google will use machine learning to identify them. The third one is called the other apps. So all the photos and videos, other apps saved to the cloud will show up here. And finally, we have one for screenshots. And the last section is called other suggestions. And here it will give you a quick shortcut to clean up your Gmail and the drive. This one will take you to the Google One app to start checking the large files and large emails and delete them. Now I'm on my Pixel 4a to show you one more change that I only got on this phone. Under the backup and sync menu, when I go to cell data usage, now I have the ability to set a daily limit for cellular data backups. The first option is called no data, which means the feature is turned off. But if I want to backup using cellular data, I can choose between a maximum limit of 5 megabytes, 10 megabytes, 30, or go for the unlimited option if I have a large data plan. But if we're going to put that side by side with the older menu, as you see here, I only have two toggles, one for photos and one for videos. Next, Google Assistant. And the first change is under the Assistant settings. Previously, I used to have one menu for videos and photos, like on my Pixel 5 over here. From here, I can add my services for photos and videos. But after the new change, they are separated. You will get one for photos and the other one is at the bottom for videos. The second change is in the interface. Now when you start a conversation with Google Assistant, it will no longer show you speech bubbles, but it will use larger text instead. On the left hand side, I have the new design on my Pixel 3 XL and the old design on my Pixel 5. So let me show you the difference. Tell me a joke. So as you see here on my Pixel 5, I'm getting speech bubbles, while here I'm getting much larger text. So now it's time for today's sponsor, Famisafe by Wondershare. Have you been a victim of cyberbullying? Then it's time to participate with your own words. Every year on the third Friday of June, there is a campaign held by Wondershare to fight cyberbullying. The campaign will donate to the non-profit anti-cyberbullying organization, CyberSmile. The amount depends on the final total entries and each participant can help generate $0.5 amount. How to participate? Use hashtag NoCyberBullying launched by Famisafe to help fight against cyberbullying. 
just click the link in the description below to check the rules or via famisave.wondershare.com. Then write down on a paper a bullying word and change it to an encouraging one with the same initial letter. Take a photo or film a short video, post the photo or video on Facebook, Twitter or Instagram with the hashtag famisafe and hashtag no cyberbullying. Go back to the campaign page and submit the post via Gleam beside the famisafe tree and refer a friend to join the gather. By this you will help push the contribution amount forward. Words have power, grab up the pen, let's start changing the cyber world from a word. Next, Google Fit. And there is a new guided paced walking activity added to the list. When you open Google Fit and scroll down, you will see a new card called set a pace for your walks. When you tap on try paced walking, it will take you through a tutorial explaining to you how the feature works. In a nutshell, this feature will play a beat that you can listen to and try to match your walking pace with it to get the most out of your activity. The second page will show you the ability to adjust the pace the way you want, but it says here 100 steps per minute is the ideal number for most people. And the last page says that the pace plays in the background, which means if you are playing music, podcasts, or anything on your phone, you will still be able to hear the beat. So let's tap on done and see how the feature looks like. In the center, it will show you the pace goal or in other words, the number of steps per minute. You can adjust the steps the way you want using the plus and minus buttons. And once you are happy with the number, tap the play button and wait for the countdown. And this is how the beat sounds like. As you see here, I have a separate volume slider for the pace. And that will give you more flexibility because if you are listening to music or podcasts while walking, you will have a separate volume without impacting your media. You will also get this location button. When you tap on it, it will show you your live location on the map so you can see your walking track. And once you stop the activity, you will get a summary about your session. Next, Gmail. And now you can change your profile picture directly from the app by tapping the avatar icon over here. It will take you to this page to add a profile picture either from your phone gallery or by using the camera. Next, Google Drive. And now you can change your folder's color by tapping the three dots next to the folder and you will see a new option here called the change color. Tapping on it will show you the color palette. Choose the one you want and you are good to go. You can do the same thing on the web by right clicking the folder and then navigate to change color as shown now on the screen. Next. Google app for iOS will allow you to use different backgrounds for your Google search widgets. To do this, first add the widget to your home screen and then open Google app, navigate to settings, general, widgets, widget theme, and here you will find four different background categories. Choose the one you want, go back to the home screen and you will find it right there. Next. Google account my activity page now supports extra verification layer before showing your activity. And to enable the feature, you can tap on manage my activity verification. It will give you two options. The first one is require extra verification. Once activated, you will not see your activity unless you tap on the verify button. It will load for a few seconds. And then it will give you this page to tap on continue. Here it will ask you for the biometric authentication method or your account password if you are using a computer. Once you verify yourself, you will be able to see your activity. Next, Google Chrome. And the first change is the ability to name your open windows. So for example, here I have a window with multiple tabs for shopping websites. Now when I right click on an empty spot in the tabs strip, I get a new option called name window. Clicking on it will show me a text field to write down the name I want. For this example, I will use the name shopping. Once done, this window will appear in the taskbar with the name I chose, which gonna make it easier for me to differentiate between open windows. The second change is the new reading list option showing at the top right corner. This feature might be available for a while for some people, but I only got it this week. To add pages to reading list, click the bookmark icon and it will show you two options. The second one is called reading list. Once the page is added, the reading list option will change its color to blue to let you know that you have something to read. From here, you can mark pages as red using the text sign or delete any of them using the X. 
If you have read and unread pages, they will show under different headings. Chrome also got a new PDF viewer with two new additions. When you click the three dots at the top right corner, you will be able to view the PDF in two page view. And the second option is called present, which will allow you to view the PDF in full screen like a presentation. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new changes I spotted in Google Apps in the first week of June. Please let me know in the comments if I missed anything. So I hope you like my video and if you do, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.